It's captivated much of the nation and has become a runaway hit, packed with more twists and nerve-jangling tension than a best-selling spy thriller. No, I refer not to what colour Greg's jacket might be on the <laughs> next edition of The Pledge, but rather the BBC drama Bodyguard. Pulling in audiences of seven million, the drama has already been accused of being too sexy as well as being too politically correct, as there are so many powerful female characters. Now some are saying it is Islamophobic, because one key scene showed a female would-be suicide bomber wearing the hijab and seeming to act under the influence of her jihadist husband. Critics have said it reinforces negative stereotypes about Muslims, and more specifically, Muslim women being under the control of their husbands. Well, note to these dreary critics, the principal terror threat in this country is from radical Islamists. Jihadi brides do exist. And, oh, yes, this is a drama, not a documentary. Look, I agree with your broad point that the people are getting all kind of on their hind legs about... It just, that's all nonsense. But, honestly, Nick, this is a fantasy and a farrago. You know, I learn more about... Um, politics and terrorism and feminism from watching Game of Thrones in this programme, because it's just nonsense. I know several of the peop people who occupy the positions that are at the centre of this, Home Secretary and so on, not one of them would react in the way that the characters in this show do. And I understand it's a drama, it's not reality, but at least drama has to be related in some way to the universe as we know it. it? This is just crazy. All right, well, let's... For some viewers who might not be up to speed, this is the key scene that's caused so much debate. Then I'll come back to you. Assalamu alaikum. Just want to talk. That's all. Yeah. And Trevor, we've been having far fetched storytelling since the days of Chaucer. It just makes no difference. Yeah, but, you know, the wife of Bath behaved like a, a real wife. There were things that then followed that were fan I fancy. Don't, I don't. The, the point about this is that. If you're going to t represent this scene, actually, what would have happened here is she would not have been dressed like that. Everybody knows that. That's why, that's why Al-Qaeda chose clean skins. That she would have been dressed in a way that didn't draw attention to her. My point is simply that the way this is done, it's like a sort of... Um, it's like a kind of cartoon fantasy. It's not a real drama. It, there's no tension in it. But... But you, I think you could say that of al almost anything. Rachel, you wanted to get in there. Are, are you with I... me that it's... A, the key word here is, is drama? Well, of course, it's drama. It's dramatic drama does not mean unreality. But it can it's... do. I, I just, can do. I cannot, I just think, Trevor, I'm afraid Star I Trek completely disagree with you. How do you know how these people would react? Amber Rudd herself, who was a female case. Home Secretary, actually contributed a piece to the Sunday Times saying a lot of it was very accurate, particularly, you know, the relationship with the close protection officers, for example. Why would a Muslim woman who yeah. is a suicide, yeah. potential suicide bomber not be wearing Just to stress, not, not saying a Amber Rudd had a relationship at that level. No, of course no, she no, didn't. Just so that we no, get, of course she didn't. Clara, back to you. But the, the other point is, is it... I thought that the burden of Nick's argument was that we shouldn't attack this for Islamophobia. Mm. Because no, no, this I, is drama. I kind of, agree, I kind stats, of agree with that. Yeah. Well, so the, the, you agree my, with my that? My real beef with it, by the way, is it's massive misogynism. This is a programme which hates women of all kinds. Oh, my but... God! What? <laughs> Whoa! Well, oh. well I'll Come let on. Rachel respond. Well, well, sorry, well, this is a programme well, that well, represents women in power, actually, which... Yeah. Uh, women oh, are in power. Right. The Home Secretary, the Metropolitan... The yeah, that's all women. Cressida that's Dick. Yeah, We've figure. had a former yeah. female and, and you think they Home would be, Secretary. And you think they We've would behave... We've got a female... Like, you think you would behave like... Why the, is the one, the one woman who's been... who Cabinet Minister woman who we know has suffered assault of this kind, remember, Margaret Thatcher? Would she really have done what this woman I did repeat, after it's that? A dra it's a drama, oh, Trev. No, 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 number one. And the, the, I'll tell you the scene that really most offended me, OK? Go on. There was I a... thought you didn't like yeah, taking I... offence, Trevor. Yeah. No, no. I thought you I were like making a stand I, against no. the, no. the culture of offence. I don't know why you've got that view. I, I take offence about all sorts of things. <laughs> the one scene that most offended me was that there was a scene where the Home Secretary, woman, and the person who I think is supposed to be the head of the Metropolitan Police, woman, they have a catfight. 
Mm. They literally, I mean, they have a cat fight. In the middle, are we about, going off topic? Why do you call, hold on, why do you call, why do you call an argument between two women a cat fight? Because that's exactly how it's represented, and it's settled by a man. My point is in that actually the way this particular series treats women <laughs> is unacceptable. And indeed, we're <laughs> oh, coming back to your wow. point about Muslims, it, the way it treats this Muslim woman who is supposed to be a suicide bomber is also okay, that's unacceptable. Hard. And there's uh, let's, let's, a, 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 okay, Shaisa Aziz, who is a Muslim woman herself, this is what she says about it. Even now in 2018, one of the tropes that keeps being recycled over and over again about Muslim women is that we're oppressed, we have no agency, we have no voice, we're controlled by men, we are unable to make our own decisions. And uh, one of the sort of things that's come out uh, as a result of the bodyguard as well is that these tropes keep being repeated. Now, programme makers have every right to create the type of characters they want, but part of the issue is that there simply isn't enough diversity and representation of Muslim women. So we don't see black Muslims on screen. We don't see non-hijabi women. Uh, most of the time when Muslim women are represented, it's through the hijab as a visible um, representation tool. Yeah, I mean, she's, a, she's an author, she's, not, oh, right. she's okay. regarded as a respected person within the Muslim community. Okay. Oh. And, and you don't have to accept the sort of knee-jerk reaction that, you know, the media is against Muslims, to accept that this isn't the way to deal right. with this topic. Oh. Good done. Well, I think the point, I've got a quote here from, from the creator uh, of Bodyguard, Jed Mercurio, and I think he says this, and I think he's right. You need to watch the whole yes. drama for a comprehensive idea of who is plotting to do harm. Um, he also says, unfortunately, the reality of our situation is that the principal terror threats in the UK do originate from Islamist sympathisers. And that's the point he's making. And I think he's right, 20 years ago, it would probably been... It would have been Irish. Of course it would have been Irish. Well, Michelle? I think we've gone massively off topic. I've never seen this uh, programme at all. It sounds riveting. I will certainly be catching <laughs> up on it. But I thought that your key point is there is um, a scene, a terrorist scene, and it's depicted by someone that's a, a Muslim the woman. woman. The drink, and I think that your point is that people are outraged that they would do, um, cast a suicide bomber yes. as being a stereotypical Muslim. Yes. Yeah. So my point is all of those people that are outraged need to just get a life because the reality of it is that if there is going to be um, a, a suicide attack, a suicide bomber attack, or a terrorist attack in this country in today's climate, the fortunate reality is that it would be potentially, well not potentially, but it would be by someone that yeah. would identify as being a Muslim and being an Islamist terrorist. I don't know why we've gone off talking about whether or not this is a good drama or not, because yes. to me that's not the okay. point. OK. Let's bring um, Rachel back in, because one point that Trevor mm. made was, was how women are portrayed in it. Now, you can speak more strongly to that, because I think they get quite a good representation. What do you say? Well, I think people have noticed that there, there is an almost um, kind of deliberate attempt to put women uh, in all the positions of authority and power. Even the sharpshooters in the first scene were mm. female, yeah, and, no. the, and the bomb disposal expert who came onto the train to, to deal with the potential terrorist was a woman. And I like it. I mean, I think it, it, it's not sex. It's not over-sexy, it's not silly. In fact, it actually reflects the right. state of affairs, and I'm pleased but with it. All of the women in it are dim or devious, or, <laughs> and, and the women that they represent are, are women who could, who could freeze molten steel with a glance, the real women, and I just think that they're getting a bad deal out of this drama. I agree with you. I, I, I mean, we all agree with Nick's right. point. That's why, that's why I want to move well, it on to something... Okay, well, we don't know...